wondering why I look like a gremlin right now, it's because I got sick, basically. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Safa, today I'm going to be doing kind of like a day in the life. Oh gosh, I have just sneeze. <coughs> Ugh, I think that just sums up everything. Um, I'm sick. So, in this video, I'm going to see how much more I can get with House and Cerulean C because it's been a while since I picked it up and I do really want to finish this book and I feel like I can get a good amount in or finish today just because I obviously don't feel the best and reading doesn't usually take up much brain space or cause I don't even know what I'm saying this is how you know I'm sick because I'm sound congested I am congested I have tissues lying everywhere so yeah this is what I'm going to read for today I'm going to get some lunch drink some liquids and do some self-care, because who doesn't love that? basically in the name of self-care decided to make a bold purchase and get the stolen air i am not going to store to pick it up because i have no mood to get out of bed or drive and i don't think it's a good idea either considering i'm sick so i decided to ship it to the store it said it should arrive by february 9th which is literally in two days and i'm very excited hopefully by then i should be reading a good amount into the cruel prince by then and we'll just go on from there i think i'm gonna actually make a reading vlog for the cruel prince series and you know get my experience um rereading it and such but i'm excited to unbox stolen air when it comes out <laughs> little things I want to update you on some future plans for this channel just because I feel like it's a good time to talk about things that we could do this year everyone has been basically talking about Chain of Thorns basically the most recent Shadowhunters book that's been released if you've been a long time subscriber you would know I've made a couple Shadowhunters vlogs for my first time reading the Mortal Instruments and the Shadowhunters Chronicles so I made it up to book three in the Mortal Instruments series and I really wanted to finish all of them before chain of thorns release but clearly that didn't happen i got sidetracked by school not to mention that there are a lot of shadow hunters books i'm thinking of picking up the next book in the mortal instrument series which i believe is the city of fallen angels and then i think it's lost souls and then heavenly fire and then i can start the infernal devices apparently though I can technically start the infernal devices now just because in terms of publication release dates it does come right after I think the City of Glass is the third book so I could if I really wanted to but I really do want to finish the Mortal Instruments just to say I got it done with. I do want to see if I can pick up the Stolen Air but I feel like I kind of want to read The Cruel Prince before that series just because I don't know much about the main character Surin and apparently people have said that she was mentioned in Queen of Nothing or at some point in the series and I'm confused when because I do not remember hearing her name at all. Read, I haven't read in a while. The second book is my favorite so we'll see how that goes. Other updates is that we learned that the Shadow and Bone Netflix adaptation season 2 is releasing March 16th which is huge and I'm very excited for it. You can tell by my excitement. <laughs> Other news is that we learned that the One Piece adaptation, the Netflix series, is actually coming this year, which is incredibly exciting. My thoughts on this is that being a One Piece fan myself, but I am a little skeptical. I'm not going to get my hopes up too high for the series simply because I, I don't understand or have high expectations in terms of how they're going to animate certain scenes especially with the whole fantasy aspect behind one piece in terms of like luffy's devil fruit powers in particular about his ability to stretch or sanji's ability to kick people upside down and nami's climb attack and all those other things it's just like how are you planning to adapt that i mean obviously animation and special effects are pretty good these days but i don't know 
that that's a hard ask to do. So I am not going to keep my hopes up too high, but I'm excited to watch it when it does come out. But that's just kind of like my update of what I want to do. If you're wondering why my hair kind of looks like a bird's nest, it's because I showered and put it up because it's easier to deal with, especially when you're blowing your nose half the time. So let's continue reading. <laughs> Again, not because I don't like it, I just don't want to read it right now. So I have decided, based on heavily being influenced on Bookstagram, I'm going to read Terms and Conditions by Lauren Asher, which is basically book two of the fine print Dreamland Billionaires series. Now I've heard out of the first two, you know, the fine print and Terms and Conditions, this one is supposed to be the much better version. Even though I actually really did enjoy the first one, I wouldn't say it was the best book I read, but it was really good. I did like that the author really had inclusion of different cast of characters, not just of different races and people of color, but also of different abilities in terms of people with disabilities especially. So there's a lot of great representation that wise. Right now, I'm about chapter 9 in the book, I believe, and basically what's happening is that Iris and Declan basically forged the fake marriage thing, which honestly, I'm still confused about why she would want to do that. Like, it's one thing to want to support your boss slash friend, I guess, because they've been working together for so long, but like, she was like really eager to do so, which is honestly very confusing, considering like she has to like give him a child and marry him and all of that. So I'm like, why would you just do it out of the blue? So that's like the one thing that they haven't answered, but I'm hoping they do. Other than that, I did some cleaning up. I have to clean up my books over here because they're on the floor. Ignore the mess in the book, but that's that. I also lent my Shatter Me collection to my friend just because she has finally started to read it. And she asked me like, what's the deal on Warner? I want to know about it. So I'm excited and she's going to read it. I'm going to talk to her and rant to her about it. That's like the best thing ever. Okay, let's continue reading Terms and Conditions. It's really bad quality just because it's nighttime, but updates on, what's it called? Terms and conditions now. So I am, I believe, a little less than halfway through the book. A lot of things happened, but like the main thing without spoiling is that I'm kind of like, I don't know if it's annoyed, but like it's a little contradictory and ironic how Iris the entire time is complaining about how she's unhappy and just like not 
you know, okay with the way Declan's treating her in this fake marriage. Like, I understand, I completely understand why she's acting that way. <clears throat> but, like, my main issue is, like, she knew what she was signing herself up for when pretending to be his fiance and obviously doing this whole marriage thing. Like, why would you sign yourself up for this knowing this is what was gonna happen? Like, and then she gets upset about it, saying, like, you don't really care that much you're not showing me any attention you know just like these things i get it completely get why she's angry but it still doesn't make sense like you put yourself in this situation deliberately and you're complaining about it so that's the only thing i'm like i just i don't vibe with right now like yes this, it's actually very entertaining though besides that initial fact but like that's like the key part of her role in the story like she signed herself up to be his fake wife at this point they're in South Africa in, on their trip, and they're going on their safari adventure, which is honestly pretty cute. And he just told that he likes elephants because of his mom, and I thought that was like a really cute little fact. It seems like he was very much like a mama's boy, like very close to her. And I like that aspect of him. It shows like he has a much softer side. He's just not letting on that much right now. Although she happens to be like one of the only people who can really see that just because she would probably be the only person he would really open up to. So I like where it's heading. And I like how the romance aspect of it is much more slow burn than I think the fine print was. The fine print was more like intense and like within the first like um, 10 chapters, usually you saw something happen. But with, with this, it's a lot more slow. <coughs> and I can see why. It can lead up to probably a better book than the fine print. Okay, but it's, let's continue reading this book. Hi, today's the next day. So I finished Terms and Conditions. It was honestly, oh, hold on, let me fix this. Okay, so it was honestly like pretty good. I really did like how it ended. I thought it was like a really cute story. I think I rated it about four, 4.25 out of five stars. Definitely better, or if not the same as the fine print. Honestly, I'm really liking this series so far. And so I think my favorite part about that book would just have to be, <sighs> I don't know, just seeing Declan change and just him accommodating Iris in just various ways to make her feel more comfortable, you know, in their home and everything. And just the way they made up was like really cute. And the fact that he went to like the dog shelter and rescued one, that was really sweet. So props to Declan. But then for some reason, I wanted to read the next book, which is the final offer, the final book in this whole series. And wow. <laughs> This book is amazing. I think I am less than halfway through, but I'm like close to halfway. And there is so much going on, but it is amazing. But essentially, this book basically features Cal's perspective, Callahan Kane, the middle brother of the three Kane brothers. And so we're following him trying to earn his inheritance by going back to Lake Wisteria and trying to co own and sell the house with his old lover, ex-girlfriend, childhood friend, Lana. Alana, that's her name. And so we're in the middle of it. So there's a bunch of things going on. But it's just, it's such like a heartwarming and like heart-wrenching read. It's a kind of book that gives you butterflies. But it also like, you can feel your stomach dropping by like how intense some moments are. Like this book gives me all the feels that the other two have not given and honestly like i can feel right now it's on track to be a five star that's how good this book is 
I never expected it to be this good. Considering when I went into the series, I kind of expected it to be like almost all the same it's because they're focusing on each brother trying to gain their own inheritance. But obviously they have their own relationships to deal with too. So I figured, you know, they're probably going to be around the same for each book. I was very much mistaken and for good reasons too. Each book is so good because it's written almost like a standalone. You could read it like that because each book just focuses on the brother and you don't need to know much about anything else in relation to the other grandsons because they're not super relevant to the story. I mean, yes, they are mentioned or involved here and there, but they're not like super integrated in the plot. But now we're on Cal's story and I have to say it's probably my favorite. I'm just so excited to see, you know, his relationship with not just Lana Grow, but Cam Kami, Cami, Camilla. It's just so sweet. I'm hoping we get a happy ending because if we don't, I would be wrecked. And honestly, I am like this close to buying it on Amazon, uh, like getting a physical copy. So that's what I'm about to do. Also, I have to make some announcements. It's just kind of funny because I placed an order for the stolen air, again, like you mentioned, a few days ago during the first round of this clip, and it was should have arrived today. But because Indigo apparently had its site taken down or has some issues with it, I don't know where it is. <laughs> so maybe it's in the mailbox. I haven't checked yet, but it's supposed to come to the house. So I'm like, Am I gonna get it soon? But honestly, I'm not gonna read it right now just because I have assignments due next week and I'm about to finish this book. So this is number one priority for um, the final offer, but still, like, where's my book? <laughs> anyway, let's continue reading. Okay, so we are on almost, I'm pretty sure I'm like three quarters of the way done the final offer now. It's getting really good. It's so cute to see the three of them spend time together. It's just such a wholesome moment and just see their bond grow over the time is so special. Because I've never felt this kind of connection with the other two books special. I think because the author really took her time and really trying to develop and stretch out and build the relationship that was lost from years ago between Cal and uh, Lana. And so I'm really enjoying it. Because the other two books, they were very different because it's kind of like you're meeting the person for the first time. Although in the second book, it's kind of like Declan obviously did know Iris, but um, they were really starting to really get, in, get to know each other on like real terms. But this one's so special just because you can see all the moments kind of coming full circle. I'm just hoping that it'll end in a great happily ever after way the way I want to and that hearts, not many hearts will be broken. I know what's going to happen. I'm honestly just dreading for that like climax portion where like everything falls apart. Like I know something's going to happen where he messes up. It's probably where he reveals like the thing about the will and the inheritance to her and it's probably going to break him apart for a bit but hopefully everything comes back again. <laughs> so... The next time I update will probably be when I finish the book. So let's just continue this so I don't have to wait any longer. A little amazing thing came along. I got two of my Amazon packages delivered. I don't know one, like, I don't know why they just didn't deliver it all at once, but came in two orders. So I'm going to open it up. So I know which books are coming. One should be the final book the fine print series oh pff, it had a tear in your sign um and the other one is a manga i got so wow it's a lot tinier so i got volume one of jujutsu kaisen i mean look at yuji he's literally a cutie i honestly i started watching it last weekend 
and I binged the entire thing in literally three days. It's only 24 episodes, so you can't help but like binge an entire series. But do they show Sukuna in this? I'm wondering. I'm kind of cheating and like staring at it. Oh yeah, yeah, he shows up. Where are you, Sukuna? We need to see. Oh, he eats the f Oh, there he is. I gotta say, he looks a lot better in the show. <laughs> he looks a lot more psychotic in the manga. And um, show Sukuna makes him look a lot hotter. <laughs> Just saying. So that is Jujutsu Kaisen. I'm going to add that to my manga collection. I'm excited because it is growing. And like I said before, I do want to make sure that I get like the first volume of all my favorite mangas. It's not like the ones I'm really into. Wow, that book is huge. And then I got the other book. It has so much dust on it. The Final Offer by Lauren Asher wow this book is so good i didn't realize how thick it was maybe i'll get the other two now but yeah here are the two books i got jujutsu kaisen and the final offer this definitely cured my sickness so much like th th this book is amazing so i'm gonna read it let's read it <laughs> So I kind of forgot to mention, but I did finish The Final Offer by Lauren Asher. It's just, it's a five out of five stars. Incredible read. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Like, I read all three of the Dreamland Billionaires books, but this one has to be my favorite. It's just something so heartwarming and sentimental and just also heart-wrenching at the same time about reading Cal and Alana's story just knowing that they were childhood lovers and then obviously something happened to kind of tear them apart and then rekindle their relationship many years down the road and just the build-up to get to the point where they start to see a bit more eye to eye and start to form that bond back again is just amazing chef's kiss i love the slow burn nature of this book i wouldn't ask honestly for anything better just because i felt like it was done so well i love that it was not rushed and that we didn't see any romantic relation anywhere in the beginning just because it would have felt way too soon considering the circumstances of their relationship and so i'm glad it was dragged out a bit and for me cami coming in to the whole mix really stirs up a whole bunch of happiness between them and it's just such a good test of how much of a dad Cal is so I really love this book the other two like the fine print and terms and conditions are honestly both equally as good but this one it's like worth every bit of the weight I highly recommend read it if you do please do it it's so worth it Okay, so this basically concludes my reading vlog. Obviously, starting off with House in the Cerulean Sea was not the best choice considering I barely read anything of this since the last time I made a reading vlog on this. So at this point, I think I've just decided to temporarily DNF the book. Many people will be upset by this, but I'm just not in the mood for this. I think February is just a time for more romance reads and that's just what I'm really in the mood to read and this is just not it right now but hopefully I pick it up at one point this year maybe soon just because I don't want to let go of it just yet and then obviously you saw me finish terms and conditions and the final offer this one being the best one in my opinion but overall great reading week considering I was sick for all of it and still am to an extent but this made the process much easier considering I just sat on my bed for like eight hours and binged both books. So I'm so excited that I bought it, finished it, and you know did some light reading while doing work. So that concludes my vlog. Thank you so much for watching. 
let me know what books you're into this month or what you plan to read and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to help a girl out, especially when she's sick. Peace.